Good morning, everybody. Thanks for being with us. Don't forget, you can stay up to date all day long on lex18.com. And just a reminder, we stream all of our newscasts live on our website, so you can watch us anytime, anywhere. You could be in Timbuktu and watch us if you would like. Yeah. LEX18 News at Sunrise. Good morning, Timbuktu. <laughs> we continue right now just after 5 a.m. Count on LEX18 News. Well, people in Scott County and a UK basketball legend helping a little boy after his father was recently killed. So a man is accused of punching a Lexington police officer overnight. We'll tell you about that. And the Commerce Department has announced they will include a citizenship question on the next census. Why people are upset about this in a new half hour of sunrise that gets underway right now. And we're so glad you're with us on this Wednesday. It is March 28th. I'm Chris Goodman. And I'm Haley Harmon. Meteorologist Tom Ackerman is here today as well. And he kicks us off with your forecast. Wet. Yes. For a couple of days at least. And unfortunately, not just wet, soggy. We could have some rounds of heavy rain rolling in. Already this morning, tracking some uh, lighter rain out of there. But definitely going to be an issue for the morning commute. And it stretches right along I-64, most widespread across northern Kentucky, and then running back the parkway as you head west towards E-Town. So look out. Our southeastern county is not seeing much so far. And the map in motion over the last couple of hours shows it tracking off to the east-northeast. So the rain lighter now. It's heavier as you get into western Kentucky. And this moisture is just going to continue to rise. And we will see a much better chance for more widespread rain. We talked about this yesterday, the day before, about how we're going to see the peak in coverage today and tomorrow. The heavy rain threat and the possibility of flooding really starts to ramp up, I think, overnight and into tomorrow after we get multiple rounds tracking through. So likely going to elevate that threat index at some point, probably overnight and then into Thursday. And uh, just get ready. It's going to be really wet. We're in the upper 50s. What are we tracking? Obviously rain. We could be talking anywhere between about two to four inches of rain over a couple of days. And this will mainly hit again today and tomorrow and then gradually fade as we go into your Easter weekend but not completely go away. I'll explain what's up with that and get a closer look at that rainfall potential coming up. Okay, Tom, thanks very much. 503. Our top story this morning, a Scott County little boy caught in the middle of a tragedy is getting some big help from his little league coach who just also happens to be a UK basketball legend. Six-year-old Channing Flum's father was killed last week in an officer-involved shooting, leaving that little boy with his mom and a heavy financial burden. LEX 18's Claire Crouch is live this morning in our studio with this update. Last week's officer-involved shooting continues to affect people who know little Channing Flum, not the least of which is UK great Jack Goose Gibbons, who also happens to be the little boy's little league baseball coach. Georgetown police say last week Joel Flum broke into his ex-wife's home looking for a man. When police got there, they say Flum pointed his gun at them, prompting them to fire shots, killing him. Like so many, the shooting got the attention of Goose Gibbons. Not only is Gibbons six-year-old Channing's little league baseball coach, but his father, Joel, was one of his assistants. The UK great says with his father gone, Channing's mom and family are faced with a large financial burden and just wants to do what he can to make sure the young boy isn't cheated out of the childhood he deserves. We don't want Channing to have to miss playing baseball. We don't want Channing to have to miss playing basketball. Uh, we want him to continue to do what he's able to do. Now already a GoFundMe page <clears throat> set up for Channing has received more than $1,300 in donations. And if you'd like to help out, we've got a link to the page inside this story on our website, lex18.com. Back to you. Claire, thank you. It's five minutes after five now. Meanwhile, people in Marion County are coming together to help the family of two children who died in a car crash. We told you about this accident yesterday. It was on Sunday. Crystal Ship, Michael Smith, and the couple's four children were headed home on the Bluegrass Parkway in Hardin County when one of the tires blew on their van. It sent them into the median, into oncoming traffic, where they hit another car. Two of the couple's children, three-year-old Bragedon and four-year-old Alina, were killed right there on the scene. Now their family is trying to raise money to help with funeral costs. You know, they really are, you know, struggling trying to come up with the money to, you know, to bury these babies. We're just trying to do any little thing we can to help them out. 
The family has set up a donation page online if you would like to help, just like Claire's story. We've posted information about this on our website, lex18.com. So many ways to help people in your community. News overnight into the LEX18 newsroom. A man is accused of punching a police officer in Lexington. This happened about midnight behind the Days Motel. That's on Versailles Road in the city. Police say they were patrolling that area. They found a suspicious vehicle. That is when they walked up to check on it, finding a man inside. We're told while officers were talking to him, he reached for something. The officer just didn't know what it was and asked him to get out of the car. At that point, police say he became extremely belligerent, fighting with the officers and punching one of them. They deployed a taser. The man was not hurt. The officer also is okay. That man, though, could face third-degree assault of a police officer and resisting arrest charges. An update this morning. A third person has now died following a shooting that happened last week in Martin County. The coroner confirms 30-year-old Amber Lockard died Tuesday. State police responded to the shooting on Goff Branch near the Lovely area on Friday. 20-year-old Micah Sammons and 26-year-old Derek James were already dead when police arrived. To protect the investigation, police have not released any further details except to say that someone shot the group and left them near an abandoned strip mine off of Kentucky 292. So far, no arrests have been made. 507, a crash on New Circle Road snarled traffic last night on Lexington's north side. Happened about 630 on the outer loop of the circle at Bryan Station Road. Lexington police say a driver was turning left from New Circle onto Bryan Station, but <laughs> apparently at that point changed his mind and decided to go right instead, right into oncoming traffic. His SUV was clipped by a car and it flipped. No one was seriously hurt, but police say the driver ended up being arrested because he had outstanding warrants in another county. News out of the Capitol, a bill that would ban a common abortion procedure in the state of Kentucky is headed to Governor Matt Bevin's desk. The House voted 75 to 13 yesterday to approve the bill, which would ban what's called dilation and evacuation 11 weeks or later into a pregnancy, except in the case of medical emergency. Abortion rights activists say if the bill becomes law, it should be challenged. They say laws in other states that are similar have been struck down or blocked when challenged in the courts. Let's cover your world now at 5.08 on LAX 18 News at Sunrise. Now to one small question that is creating one big controversy. The question is, are you a U.S. citizen? The Trump administration plans to ask that question on the upcoming U.S. Census set to be taken in 2020. Tracy Potts explains why nearly two dozen states are saying that question is illegal. The short-form U.S. Census that most households get hasn't asked about citizenship since 1950. The Trump administration says it's necessary to enforce the Voting Rights Act. It is important that we're able to count citizens of a voting age population. The key word there is citizens. Critics say it's political, aimed at Democratic states with lots of immigrants who may be afraid to answer. They're trying to scare people. This is an intimidation tactic. 20 states and more than 100 civil rights groups are urging the Commerce Department to drop the question. California is suing. If through a uh, census undercount, California loses a seat or two or more in Congress, it literally diminishes our voice in our federal government. An undercount could also mean states lose millions for crime fighting, health care, transportation, schools, all based on population. If a, a particular child has not been counted in the census, the monies that would help avoid having large class sizes in our schools, those, those problems start to surface. Opponents fear the citizenship question could lead to an inaccurate count for a decade. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has made a surprise trip to Beijing, China. State media confirming this yesterday. Yeah, the trip is Kim's first abroad since he took the reins after his father died in late 2011. The young North Korean leader held talks with the Chinese president and a handful of his deputies. White House officials say they have been briefed on the development, and they view this as a positive step forward in creating the appropriate atmosphere for dialogue with North Korea. 
Closing arguments are expected to begin today in the trial of the widow of the Pulse nightclub shooter. Noor Salman is accused of aiding and abetting her husband, Omar Mateen, to commit the terror attack at the Orlando nightclub back in June of 2016. The defense rested yesterday. Prosecutors did not call rebuttal witnesses. Prosecutors argued Salman knew her husband was buying rounds of ammunition and that she knew about his plan to open fire inside the nightclub. Mateen killed 49 people in that attack. If convicted, Noir Salman could get life in prison. Crews will begin dismantling the growing memorial around Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School today in Parkland, Florida. City of Parkland officials will archive the items that people have placed around the perimeter of the campus where a gunman shot and killed 17 people on Valentine's Day, mostly students. A group of volunteers will store the items in a temperature-controlled fort for now. They'll eventually be transported to a local university until the city comes up with a permanent home. 5-11, a former dean at Michigan State University is arraigned on charges connected to the investigation of sexual abuse at MSU. William Strample was Dr. Larry Nasser's boss and the former dean of the school's College of Osteopathic Medicine. Strample is charged with sexually harassing female students and storing nude photos of female students on his work computer. Prosecutors also say Strample failed to keep Nasser in line, allowing the sports doctor to sexually molest female students at MSU and Olympic gymnasts. A preliminary hearing is scheduled for May 3rd. And finally, a state trooper in Utah is recovering after a frightening accident that happened while he was helping a motorist on the side of a roadway. Utah Highway Patrol Sergeant Cade Brinchley was approaching a white vehicle on the shoulder, as you see here. When another Ooh. car oh, slammed into him, sent him flying into that stopped vehicle. Oh, gosh. He was assisted by several bystanders and then rushed to the hospital for treatment. He spoke in a news conference yesterday and said he truly believes miracles do happen after watching the video. He said the woman who hit him apologized at the scene and also visited him at the hospital. He was saying he does not hold any ill will against her and that she simply made a mistake. Glad he is okay. Yes. A suspected burglar caught on camera appealing to a higher power for help before breaking into a clothing store. Yeah, the New York Police Department released surveillance video that shows the man approaching a clothing store in Brooklyn during the height of the latest Nor'easter. The devout burglar is then seen making the sign of the cross, as you see there, before committing the crime. The burglar took a brick at that point and threw it against the store's glass door. Once inside, he's caught on another camera swiping about 20 pieces of luxury clothing that's hanging on a rack and then grabbing some folded items. He switched that old saying of better to ask what? Forgiveness than permission? The exact same thing, <laughs> yes. He's like, I'll do the forgiveness thing, but I'll do it first. <laughs> first, right. Get it over with now. Forgive me for what I'm about to wow. do. <laughs> Woo, it's 513, and oh, get ready for a rainy few days. Yeah. yeah, soggy at times, especially later on tonight and tomorrow. We'll talk about the rain that is already on the way and already here in your Storm Tracker forecast.
Getting ready for a wet commute. The rain coming down. It's been steadily spreading in, tracking in overnight. At least it's warm. It's 57 degrees. For this time of the year, we'll have above average highs in the mid 60s again later on today. So yeah, for even for late March, that's on the warmer side technically. But I tell you what, with the overcast skies and the rain, it's not going to be a pleasant day by any stretch. The wind straight out of the south, eight miles per hour. We've had four hundredths of an inch of rainfall at Bluegrass Airport, but that number is going to climb for sure. Over the next couple of days, your Max Track Live shows the orientation of the rain from the southwest, stretching off to the northeast, gradually working its way in here this morning. Our southeastern counties, you guys haven't seen much so far. It's mainly been wrong along I-64 and then running out the parkway as you head out towards E-Town and clearly uh, western Kentucky getting soaked. Heavier rain out there. So what we're going to see is this moving in our direction, the heavier stuff. Uh, that'll pick up later on this morning into this afternoon, and then the heavy rain threat starts to uh, pick up and continue overnight and into tomorrow. So with multiple rounds tracking our way, we've got a flood watch in effect, and it cuts right through the heart of the viewing area. It runs through uh, 11 o'clock tomorrow night for much of the bluegrass and actually goes into Friday morning for our southeastern counties. Now, rainfall has been on the lighter side, hundreds of an inch, but we're looking at uh, pretty good soaking and not good, uh, but just a, a hefty soaking coming through. And it will be multiple rounds. This is the wave that could impact the morning commute. Notice our southeastern county is still not seeing a whole lot. A bit of a split forecast here. Eventually, it should push into eastern Kentucky later on this afternoon. Likely catch a little bit of a break. I mean, they'll still be around. Just won't have the widespread coverage. And then we'll see it ramp up again overnight and into tomorrow morning. Some rumbles of thunder, a possibility. Bursts of heavy rain likely. And we don't really see this start to wind down until Friday morning. So this is getting you into Thursday night. We've still got... Uh, potentially heavy rainfall before they see it starting to back off. So uh, we talked about this before, anywhere between about a two to four inch rainfall. We're showing three inches on the high end, but we get these repeated waves coming through. We could have four inches or more in spots, which could lead to some flooding concerns, flash flooding or just general, uh, you know, standing water on roadways. We just came off our wettest February on record in Lexington with over 10 inches of rain. We're not going to do that again this month, but we're just shy of our average monthly rainfall for uh, the month of March, and of course we pick up an inch or two of rain, we're going to blow past that. Our wettest ever was back in the late 90s when we had almost 14 inches of rain. So a soggy setup over the next couple of days. We're in the 50s now, we're heading for the mid-60s. Your shower's already here. We'll accentuate it with some isolated thunder showers and maybe even some locally heavy rain. I'm going to keep that threat index at zero for now. We should be able to handle the initial rain okay, but... Remember, we're coming off the tail end of all that active weather over the weekend, so we haven't really had sufficient time to dry out to be able to handle rounds of heavy stuff. So probably bump the threat in index up to a one overnight due to that potential for flooding. Overnight lows down the low to mid 50s. And then tomorrow we'll see that continuation of rounds of showers, maybe some thunder showers, definitely that heavy rain threat Thursday before it all finally winds down Friday morning with some lingering showers. A brief break Saturday. Too bad that's not Easter Sunday because Easter Sunday we do start to see shower chances creeping back in. We're still keeping it around a 40% chance, but do know late in the weekend you guys may be uh, dodging some raindrops as well. Okay, Tom, thank you. 519, let's talk about The Voice. A Powell County native performed on NBC's The Voice last night, just one night after another Kentuckian survived the battle round. 17 year old Lydia Faith went up against Terrence Cunningham in a duet of Grace Potter's stars. In the end, their coach Alicia Keys chose Terrence over Lydia. That sent her home. We certainly wish. Livia, all the best, and we just want to remind you that you can watch The Voice at 8 Mondays and Tuesday nights here on LEX 18 and keep up with former Marshall County and Caleb Lee, who remains in the contest on Kelly Clarkson's team. Good luck to Caleb and Livia. Good luck to her as well. She is such a talented young girl. 520, if you're feeling adventurous, heads up. The Kentucky Kingdom will soon be operating a zip line through a Louisville forest. Zip Line Kingdom will feature a 30-foot high zip line and 39 different activities you can do as well, including a Tarzan swing, a zigzag suspension bridge, rope ladders, a log swing, just about anything. Kentucky Kingdom is buying the zip line from Go8 after they declined to renew their contract. Zipline Kingdom is scheduled to open June 1st. And don't forget, we actually have a place um, here in Lexington off Old Richmond Road that does Zipline. They opened just last year. 
Their name escapes me at this moment. I'll tell you guys in a minute. Bo Boone Creek. Boone Creek. Boone Creek. I've is never what it's gone called. zip lining, but man, I do want to try it. I went out there recently, a couple months ago, and it was awesome. If you haven't been, so if you don't want to make the drive to Louisville because they don't open until June, right. you can go you right can here. Go to Boone Creek. That's right. All right, coming up on 521 now, and straight ahead, a dog in Kansas has given birth to nearly a dozen puppies, possibly setting a record. We're going to tell you more about that when we come right back. You're watching Sunrise on a Wednesday morning. You're watching LEX 18 News at Sunrise. Okay, this is such a crazy story. Just take in this image for a minute. A pregnant Chihuahua mix out of Kansas recently gave birth to 11 puppies. The dog's foster family says that is a record-breaking number. Amy Anderson has the story. What could be cuter than puppies? How about 11 of them? It was on National Puppy Day, this puppy foster family in Olathe, Kansas, got quite the surprise. One came, you know, one more came out, and then two, three, four, five more came out, and I'm like, and she still was round and bulbous, and obviously there was more puppies in there. Another six to be exact. The Unleashed Rescue Group was getting regular updates from the Browns as mom made her way through more than 12 hours of giving birth. And when we hit about 8, we're like, whoa, she's not done? And then we got an update that we were at 10 and we about had a heart attack. Incredibly, all 11 puppies were born healthy. Mama Dog was rescued from a terrible hoarding situation. And at just a year and a half old herself, this is already her second litter of puppies. The Browns say she is a wonderful, attentive, and protective mother, and she, too, will soon be looking for her forever home. They say they know things will be kind of crazy in their house over the next few weeks, but say it's well worth it. I mean, it's not the hardest thing in the world to do, you know, to love on puppies. Oh, oh, my goodness. Amy Anderson reporting for us. That is so sweet. And, yeah, she's going to be up for adoption soon. She deserves a good family. That I'm, sweet little oh, I'm sure that mom feels so much better, oh, too, right goodness. now. It's coming up on 525 on LEX 18 News at Sunrise. All right, stick with us. Coming up, we are going to take a look at our Facebook question of the day. We're talking about an ice cream company that has people very upset. We'll explain why next.
By 27, an ice cream chain facing backlash because some say their name is highly offensive. You take a judge, you be the judge. It's called Sweet Jesus Ice Cream. It was founded in 2015 in Toronto, Canada, but is facing new calls for a boycott from some Christian communities. Yeah, in fact, one citizengo.org petition with more than 10,000 signatures claims the shop serves up blasphemy. Certain menu items, such as red rapture ice cream and sweet baby Jesus ice cream, along with religious language used by the chain on social media, have upset some people. The chain has nearly 20 locations across Canada, one here in the U.S. It's in Baltimore, and we understand they have plans to open a second location at the Mall of America. And that brings us to our LEX18 Facebook question on this Wednesday morning. We're asking, do you think Sweet Jesus Ice Cream should change its name. All right, let's take a look at some of our responses. Jocelyn, good morning to you. She said, oh, for goodness sake, must we all be offended by everything? You don't like the name of the shop? How about just go to Baskin Robbins? No <laughs> harm, no foul, move along. Tony says, get a grip, people. One, Jesus has a sense of humor. Let's move on. Two, don't we have better things to talk about? Dolores says, the name of Jesus is holy. It shouldn't be used so lightly. So, yes. It should be changed. So. A couple of other people had brought up that uh, there is a beer, apparently, yes, called, called Sweet, Sweet Jesus. Baby Sweet Jesus. Sweet Baby Jesus. Yes, so. yes. All right, 528 on LEX 18 News at Sunrise. A group of scientists have created a robotic fish. How it can spy on real ones, we're going to tell you coming up shortly. And Lee Cruz is live a little bit later this morning. Speaking of ice cream, he is at Crank and Boom Ice Cream. And your top stories are coming up next here on Sunrise.